All right. So hello, everyone. So welcome to the very first uh, workshop of API Days Interface 2020. So in this workshop, I'm going to uh, talk about API management for GraphQL. So as you know, uh, GraphQL has been uh, becoming very popular since uh, recently, mainly because it solves uh, certain major problems that we've been facing with REST APIs. So people have started uh, using GraphQL in their projects. Uh, however, uh, if you want, if when you want to have, uh, run APIs in production, you need some kind of an uh, API management layer on top of uh, your APIs. So uh, you need that mainly because you want to apply certain kind of policies on top of your APIs. For example, uh, security policies, rate limiting policies, etc. And then again, you want uh, to see insights, how your APS behave, how your APS are being used, et cetera. So these stuff are uh, valid for GraphQL APS as well. So therefore, I'm going to talk about uh, how you can apply these uh, API management concepts for GraphQL. And, uh, and uh, I'm assuming uh, all of you are familiar with REST API, uh, REST API so I'm going to talk about GraphQL API management in contrast to uh, REST API management. Right. So my name is Bhatia. So I'm uh, working in WSO2. So I mainly work in uh, API management space. Today I'm uh, joining all the way from Sri Lanka. Right. So this is what I'm planning to cover today. So I, uh, to begin with, I'm going to give a brief introduction uh, for GraphQL. And then I'll be talking about the differences between a REST and uh, GraphQL. And then uh, I'm going to go to the main topic of this workshop, which is API management for GraphQL. And finally, I'll be, uh, I'll be doing a demo uh, explaining how you can practically, practically apply these uh, API management concepts for GraphQL. Right, let's get started. What's GraphQL? So GraphQL is basically a query language for your APIs. So one of the main advantages of uh, GraphQL is it gives exactly what you ask for, nothing more or nothing less. So this flexibility gives uh, this developer friendliness to GraphQL. And if you if you compare the performance wise, GraphQL is better than REST API. And GraphQL has uh, this uh, GraphQL schema definition. We call it uh, SDL. So it's similar to Open API specification that REST APIs have. And one may, uh, one other important thing is, uh, unlike REST APIs, GraphQL are served over HTTP by a single endpoint. So it's uh, something uh, it's different from uh, REST API in that way as well. Right, so this is the example use case that, that I'm going to use throughout this workshop. Uh, so this is a product management service. So I have uh, implemented this as a GraphQL service uh, in my local machine. And I have uh, an SDL uh, for this service as well. So if I explain this uh, service, I uh, you can see there's a retailer and there's a set of products uh, that is uh, sold by the retailer. And there's a set of customers who are buying these products. So this is the SDL of this service. If you look at here, you can see that this customer and product sections uh, represent the components of our service. So we call these types. So if you look at these types, it defines what are the fields available in each of these types. So basically, these two are custom types, and there are root types as well. So these query and mutations are two root types. And other than that, there's a subscription root type as well. So if you look at this query root type, you can see uh, these are the operations, query type operations that are exposed by this GraphQL, search, GraphQL API. And it's the same for mutation as well. So now let's uh, have a look at uh, how you can do the operations of each kind of uh, root types. 
So this is about GraphQL query. So if you want to fetch something from a GraphQL API, you have to send a GraphQL query. So if you look at this query, it executes uh, this uh, query operation and request both these fields. So then if you look at the responses, you can see how closely the response resembles the request. Uh, and see, uh, it lists down all the products in the system with the exact fields you requested for. So that's about uh, GraphQL queries. And then uh, if you want to write something, update something, or delete something, you, what you uh, can use is GraphQL mutations. So if you look at the mutation request here, uh, in the first, uh, this section defines what are the stuff that you want to write. And the bottom section defines what you need to have in the response. So if you look at the response, you can see uh, once the product is added, you, uh, the response is exactly the same what you asked here. And then the third root type is subscription, and that's uh, that can be used when you want to subscribe to certain kind of event and uh, get up real time updates. So usually this is implemented with web sockets or similar technologies. And if you think of our uh, use case, we can think of scenario where uh, the retailer uh, wants to be notified whenever a customer node is added. That means whenever a customer buys something, the retailer can be notified. So let's uh, quickly have a look at uh, what are the uh, main differences between uh, REST and GraphQL. To identify the main difference, uh, let's take, and see, take a simple example. So let's assume the, re the retailer wants to know the list of customers who ordered a particular product. So if you think of how this can be implemented in uh, uh, REST API, first we have to fetch all the products because we don't know the uh, product ID of the product that we are interested in. So we first have to send the get call to the product resource and get all the products. Then as the second call, we need to fetch the customer list of the product that we are interested in. For that, we can send a get request for this resource. Then what we get is the list of customer IDs. Now we have to send, uh, when, then we have to send the HTTP call, call for each of these IDs to fetch customer information. So the total number of uh, HTTP calls depend on the number of IDs you received in this second call. Now, if you look at how this can, how the same uh, can be experienced in GraphQL, it simply needs just one query to receive the same data set. So if you look at this uh, query request, you can see it requests for product ID, product category, and customer name, where the product ID is equals to two. And here you can see it gives the same data set which we retrieved in the uh, third risk call in the previous example. And so that, that's the that's the main difference between GraphQL and REST APS, and that's the uh, that's actually the beauty of GraphQL. And there are uh, some other differences uh, as well. So I have listed them pros and cons uh, comp of GraphQL compared to REST. Uh, so if I go through them, so the and one one of the major things is there is no more overfetching or underfetching that happens because what GraphQL provides uh, sends you is exactly what you asked for. And then uh, this we already talked about that you only need a single API call to uh, fetch data. And since there, uh, since we only need a very few HTTP calls, the the performance wise uh, GraphQL is better than REST API. And then uh, this is another important thing that GraphQL encourages versionless API evolution. If you think about why we need versions is uh, that when we have uh, changes in the backend, we don't want to break our clients. So that's why we need version. But uh, in, the, in GraphQL, what the client receives is only what they ask. Uh, we can simply add new stuff uh, without worry. 
So the addition part is uh, there's nothing to think about when you add adding thing to yourself. So if you want to remove something, the GraphQL natively supports uh, this uh, duplicated uh, notation. So you can use that to duplicate certain fields and remove uh, after some time. So those are about pros uh, of GraphQL. And then if you look at the cons, uh, so even though this GraphQL is very uh, developer friendly for the front end, the use the clients, it can be very uh, costly for the back end. Therefore, when the queries are complex, it can be a severe hit performance wise. Therefore, when you, uh, so you, it, it's a decision that, that you need to take when you design uh, your projects uh, when you want to uh, involve GraphQL. And another, another thing is uh, GraphQL does not have HTTP caching support. Therefore, uh, it's not suitable for the applications that are heavily depending on a cache. For example, content delivery networks are heavily depending on cache. Therefore, uh, it's, uh, GraphQL is not very uh, useful for uh, CDNs. And uh, it can be just overkill for smaller apps because GraphQL is a little bit complex to implement and it has a bit of a uh, bit learning curve. So therefore, it can be an overkill for smaller apps. And then again, it does not have uh, support for file up. So these are the uh, pros and cons of GraphQL. So, so far we talked about GraphQL. Now we are going to the main topic uh, of this workshop, which is API management for GraphQL. So first of all, uh, why we need API management? So API management, so and why we need API management and what we get through API management. So, the, so I have listed here, what I have listed is what we get through API management. So basically, th there's a lot uh, we get through API management. These are only the main, uh, a few main things that I'm going to talk uh, in detail. So first two is authentication and authorization, and then uh, rate limiting. And the fourth one is uh, threat protection. And the fifth one is analytics. So all these are, uh, typical API management aspects. So now we are going to have a look at how we can apply these API management concepts for GraphQL. So let's uh, start with authentication. So since APIs are mostly exposed to external users, having authentication is crucial. So there's uh, no doubt on it. Uh, so this is so therefore, this is uh, a main, this one of the main responsibilities of the API management layer. So it's, it's, it's the same for GraphQL as well. However, there can be certain cases where we want to expose certain functionalities without authentication. So let's uh, take an example and how we can impl implement something like that. Right, so let's take this example. Let's assume, let's take the same example that I explained earlier, this product, product management example. So in that case, let's assume I want to allow getting product list without a token. That means uh, getting product has to be no authentication. But uh, I don't want to allow uh, getting customers of a product without a token. So let's see how we can implement uh, this in REST uh, in a typical way. So when you when you do that with REST, there will be usually two resources of products and uh, customers of products. And in, so it's, it's, a just, it's just a matter of uh, turning off authentication for this particular resource while keeping, res uh, keeping security authentication on for this resource. That's very straightforward. But as uh, I mentioned in GraphQL, there is just one URL. So how do we do that? So even though GraphQL URL uh, does not uh, reflect anything uh, uh, on the resources or actions, it has this concept of operations. I, I talked about query operations and mutation operations. But to identify these operations, you need to look at the request payload. So that's a, that becomes a part of the API management layer. So if you look at this left-hand side request, it has it 
uh, has this product uh, operation. And in the right hand side, it has this product operation plus customer operation inside. So if we, so uh, to, to cater to what we need to, um, to open the, uh, to expose the getting, expose the product list without authentication, what we need to do is we have to expose this product operation uh, without authentication. And we are, but then we can uh, expose this customer operation secure. So the API management layer has to read the body and identify the operation and then apply this authentication uh, policies. So I, I, will, I will be covering all this in the demo. So then if you look at the authorization, uh, there can be certain, certain functionalities that we want to uh, that we want only a, a set of people to be used. Uh, so in such that case, uh, there needs to be there needs to be a validation uh, that has to be happen at the API management layer. Uh, that that validation has to be happen using the user permissions. So this is uh, again uh, another important responsibility of the API management layer. Uh, and this is typically done with all two scopes. And uh, let's take an example and see how that can be implemented in REST and GraphQL. Right, so let's assume uh, we want, so uh, you, you might remember that there was a mutation to add products. So let's uh, take that as an example. So in uh, so we, we, now we, what we want is, we want to allow retailers to add products, but we don't want any, anyone else uh, to have that capability. So if you think about the REST solution, uh, we will typically have a resource like this, post product. So it's, a matter, it's just a matter of uh, assigning the scope to that resource. But uh, so basically it's, it will be uh, decided based on the URL. But uh, if you think about GraphQL, just like in the authentication case, since we do not have the concept of resources, we'll have to attach that scope to the operation, the mutation operation in this case. And to do that, again, the API management layer has to create the payload and decide the operation. So that's about authorization. And uh, then rate limit. So, so if you think why we need rate limiting is there can be uh, many reasons. So I have listed, listed down two. The first one is uh, there's only certain amount of load that uh, any API backend can handle at a time. So we need to make sure that we do not send uh, more than what backends can handle. So it becomes a responsibility of API management layer to do this uh, throttling part. And then again, if you think about the second uh, one, uh, if your APIs are monetized, these monetization business plans usually come with rate limiting policies. So that means uh, if you want a higher rate limit, you, may, you might have to go for higher uh, business plans uh, for which uh, you will have to pay more. So if you think about how we can implement REST API, how we can implement rate limiting REST API, yes, usually that's done via uh, trans, uh, policies uh, in the form of uh, transactions per second, transaction, transactions per minute, etc. So this, so in REST, uh, different resources can have different uh, rate limiting policies. But if you think about the same uh, with respect to GraphQL, in GraphQL, uh, it may not make much sense to think of TPS or TPM. That's because in GraphQL, we cannot uh, predict the backend load uh, just by looking at the number of incoming requests. Because we know in, in GraphQL, you, you, you only need a simple request to fetch as many as data you want. So we need something else to decide, uh, decide this. So there can be different ways. So I'm going to talk about two uh, common ways that is query depth analysis and query query complexity analysis. So let's 
So here, this is the query depth analysis. So if you look at the uh, left-hand side uh, query, you can see this, uh, this query's depth can be infinite. And that can be cyclic as well. You can see that planets, films, planet. to handle. So we need the way to stop these kind of requests. So the most simplest solution, simplest solution is to have a depth limit. Right. So I, I, will, I will show this uh, in the demo how you can do this. And, and then if you think about the depth analysis, uh, the query depth may not be always the culprit uh, for, for higher backend load, because there can be certain fields, because there can be the, the cost of fetching certain fields or nodes can be different one to another. Therefore, there can be uh, uh, queries that are very expensive, but uh, but they are not very. They don't have to go deep to be like that. So therefore, we need to have a way to uh, restrict these uh, queries based on complexity as well. So one solution for this is to set complexity limits, complexity levels for each nodes and fields like this, and then come up with a, an algorithm to uh, calculate the aggregated complexity value for each uh, GraphQL query. So, however, if you think about uh, how we can calculate this graph, this complex, this aggregated complexity value, there is no standard way. So if you look at the uh, first example rule, what it does is it simply adds up the complexity levels of all fields uh, and uh, gets the aggregated value. And if you look at the second rule, it seems uh, what it does is uh, when there are arguments like first and last, it multiplies the uh, value of that node uh, by that argument value, and uh, so and calculates the uh, aggregated value for the entire query. So, like I mentioned, uh, different uh, since there is no standard, different uh, group of people follow different approaches. For example, a GraphQL org defines an approach as a combination of these two rules. And then if you look at GitHub's uh, GraphQL API, uh, they are mandating the use of these first and last arguments, and they are sticking to a flavor of uh, this second rule. So that's uh, about uh, complexity analysis. Right, now uh, let's uh, have a look at analytics. So you know analytics is important in different ways. So basically there, are, there can be two types of analytics, this business analytics and operational analytics. So operational analytics helps you to maintain the health of your APS. And business analytics helps you uh, to, for the growth of your APS. So business analytics helps you to identify certain usage patterns. It helps you to identify uh, new business uh, opportunities for your APS itself. So if you think about how, uh, how we can implement uh, and how we usually implement uh, analytics in REST APIs, there can be resource level analytics for REST APIs. So when you think the same about GraphQL, then uh, GraphQL needs operation level analytics. However, to do that, uh, this uh, API management layer needs to be aware of GraphQL because the API man uh, management layer needs to read the GraphQL query and identify the GraphQL operations and uh, collect stats on those operations level and publish to the analytics engine. So that's uh, how uh, you can achieve analytics for uh, GraphQL. Right, so now we can uh, go to the demo where uh, I will show how you can uh, use an SDL to, uh, how you can uh, use an SDL 
to import and uh, generate an API proxy for your GraphQL and then apply certain kind of policies for your GraphQL API. So this is uh, the WSP API Manager Publisher Portal. So I'm going to use this uh, Publisher Portal to create my uh, GraphQL proxy. For that, I'm going to uh, create, go to this Create API section, and I'm going to use this uh, use this Import SDL Schema option. Here, I'm uh, I'm asked to upload the uh, SDL. So I have a SDL here. Now the SDL is up, uh, uploaded, so here I can give uh, basic information for my API. So here I need to provide uh, the, uh, the real endpoint of my GraphQL API. So I have this service deployed localhost, so I'm going to provide that. And then I can uh, select a set of business plans uh, so that uh, API consumers can uh, pick one when they are subscribing to this API. Right. Now my API is in the created state. So before publish, let's uh, have a look at the operations of this API. So here you can see it lists down all the operations we had in this year. Uh, and it also shows the operation type. And here you can uh, see how you can apply uh, rate limiting policies, scores, etc., to each operation. So let's first uh, have a look at, uh, let's try to apply uh, authentication policies. So if you look at here, uh, by default, uh, authentication is enabled for all operations. So if you remember our example of, uh, we took in the, when we, when we were talking about authentication, we want to expose this uh, all products query without authentication. Let's try to do that. So I disabled uh, authentication. And if you remember, we wanted to have the customer operation with authentication. So let's, so I'm leaving it uh, as it is and save the API. Now I'm going to publish my API so that it can be discoverable in the developer port. So I'm going to this uh, lifecycle tab and publish my API. Now it's in the published state. So now I'm going to the developer port. So this is the developer portal and I, uh, I have already logged in using uh, this user Anne. Uh, she's an application developer. So now uh, let's, oh, sorry, now I have to refresh. Yes, so now uh, you can see the products API that we just created. Let's go inside that. Now let's uh, quickly try out uh, the API directly. So this is the tryout tool. This GraphQL uh, tryout tool is very uh, comprehensive. It has lots of features. So if you go to this Explorer section, hide this trick. Uh, you can see all the uh, code operations are listed. So this is the operation that we are interested in, interested in in this case. So I'm going to try that. Since uh, so I want all these fields of all products. So since uh, I disabled authentication, I do not need to provide a token here. So I should be able to invoke this. Yes, it uh, provides me with uh, the products available in the system. Now, if I go ahead and try to fetch more details, so I'm, I'm going to fetch more details on the customer. So if you look at since here, when I uh, pick customer, this part is auto-generated. Now this, if I, when I run this, I should not be allowed to run this because it has this section. And I, uh, I did not disable uh, authentication for this section, so I'm, I should be not allowed to execute this query without a token. Right. So it says in audit credentials because I didn't provide any uh, provide any credentials to invoke this. So that's uh, about applying authentication policies. Now let's uh, go back to the publisher portal and now let's see how we can apply authorization policies. 
I'm going back to the operation. So as I mentioned, authorization is typically uh, enforced via Auth2 scores. So uh, if I remind you the example we took in the authorization case, we wanted to restrict this ad, ad product of mutation to retailer users on. So let's try to do that. So for that, I need to create a scope. So for that, I'm going to go to this scope section and create a new scope. I'm going to create a scope called add product. So I want to restrict this scope for the retailers only. So I have already created a role called retailers and put all retailer users to that role. So I'm going to bind this scope to this uh, the retailer role. So I said, now this scope uh, can be accessed by retailer user on. So retail, the users in the retailer role on. So I'm going to go to the operations. Then I assign that scope to this operation. So what that means is now this operation can be executed by the users in the retailer role on. So let's. Uh, Go and see how it works. So now I'm going back to the uh, developer portal. Right. So now uh, let me delete that. So now what I want is a mutation. Right. So this is the mutation that we are interested in. So I'm going to. Uh, yeah, uh, I I leave the category as clothing, and I'll set the name as little shoes. Uh, so that's about the request. That uh, basically what I need to add. Then in the response, I want ID and name. Right. So uh, so so since we attached the scope to this uh, operation. I need an access token with that scopes to invoke this operation. So let's uh, first try with an access token uh, that is uh, that does not have the uh, specified scope. Uh, to generate an access token, I need to subscribe. Uh, I need to subscribe uh, to that API. For that, uh, I'm going to go to the API. So yeah, so this. Uh, here in the subscribe section, I'm, uh, I have already created this application. Uh, I'll go with unlimited policy. Now I subscribe. Now, uh, if I go to the tryout button again, you can see uh, the access token is populated here. Now I can try the mutation again. And I want ID and name back. So, so this should I I should not be allowed to run this request because the access token does not have the necessary scope. Let's try. Right. So it says uh, uh, so I'm not allowed to uh, invoke this uh, with uh, this particular token. So let's. Uh, Let's try to uh, get a token with that particular score. For that, I need to go there and uh, go to the production keys. I'm copying this curl to generate an access token. So to generate an access token with this scope, I need the user who's in the retailer role. So I have a different uh, user for that. So I'm going to fetch a token. Uh, with that use. So the username is Randy. Randy is the retailer user. Uh, 
So here I have to request the scope that I want. I'm asking for the add product scope. So since the since Randy has the retailer role, uh, Randy can take the access token with this uh, add product scope. So I'm going to copy this uh, access token. Now let's try to invoke the same operation uh, to add the product. From history, I can get this. Right. So this should, yes. This allowed me to uh, add the product and it also uh, returns the uh, information that I requested. So that's how authorization uh, policies can be applied to uh, GraphQL APIs. Now let's go back uh, to the publisher and see how we can apply rate limiting policies. So apply typical rate limiting policies is very straightforward. Uh, so if you can uh, do that, uh, you can apply rate limiting policies in at API level like this, uh, or you can uh, do that in operation level. Like this, but as we, uh, as I mean, as I explained, the typical API, uh, rate limiting policies does not make much sense for GraphQL APIs. Therefore, we need that's why we needed this uh, depth analysis and uh, complexity analysis. So let's try to set those uh, depth limits and uh, complexity limits uh, for this API. Uh, so first, uh, if I First, let's try to set, the, set those complexity values for each of the fields in our SDL. For that, uh, I'm going to this runtime configuration and here in the core analysis section. It lists down all the nodes and fields in our SDL. You can see this customer, product, etc. So uh, I can set complexity values, different complexity values here. So when you set different when you set complexity values, what you need to consider is the uh, cost of fetching these uh, fields. So this depends on the data source where you fetch this data from. So based on the, that, you can set, uh, you, you need to make a judgment call and set these values. So once that's set, now we need to set the complexity and depth limits. So that's done via uh, subscription policies. For that, uh, I'm going to the admin portal. So here I have the admin portal. And if you remember, when I subscribed, so here the subscription policies, it lists down all the subscription policies. So if you remember, when, uh, when I subscribed to the API, I used this unlimited uh, subscription policy. So I'm going to edit the same policy uh, so that I don't have to subscribe again. So here, we go down. So by default, it doesn't have a complexity or depth value set. So I'm going to set complexity limit five and depth limit three. Right. Now, uh, let's go back to the uh, developer portal and see how uh, those are applied. Right. So for that, uh, I'm going to run a query. Let's try to fetch all products again. Uh, let's first, first try to try with a, a query which has a, a bit of depth. So let's go deep into this. So, so this has like uh, one, two, three, five, six. Uh, depth levels. So ideally, this should be. Uh, so I should not be allowed to send this request because uh, it reaches the depth limit we set. It says query two D. So and it says uh, depth level is six and the limit is three. So that's how uh, this is, uh, depth limit is applied. So now let's. Uh, have a look at complexity value as well. I'm going to, I'm removing this. Uh, so here, 
I am adding more fields in the same depth. So if you remember, I set the complexity value as five. So now I think the aggregated value must be more than five. If I run this, yes, it says the query to complex. So that's how uh, you can apply uh, and uh, observe uh, these complexity uh, limits uh, applied to graph theory. So with that, uh, we come to the end of this uh, workshop. So I hope I explain, uh, I, 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 throughout this workshop, I explain how uh, it's like start with uh, GraphQL. I explained how, what GraphQL is, and then I explained, to, I talked about the differences between REST and GraphQL. Then I explained the different aspects of API management, uh, uh, API management in, Graph GraphQL, how, how we can then uh, I explain how you can apply those uh, different kinds of API, API management aspects to GraphQL, and in demo I explain how how you can do that practically. So I hope uh, you learned something in this workshop. So if you have any questions, uh, you can say now. Uh, I will answer. Yes, there's a question. Do you support uh, live queries on subscription? Uh, at the moment, we do not. Uh, so I believe your question's about uh, queries on subscription. So I, I hope your, the question is about GraphQL subscriptions. If that's the question is about, uh, yeah. So we uh, currently, uh, we don't support uh, subscriptions yet uh, currently in, uh, implemented uh, 3.1 uh, one and uh, we are releasing 3.2 within the next two weeks. Uh, we only support GraphQL uh, query and uh, mutation. So, and we are planning to uh, add uh, subscription support in the uh, near future. So any other questions? So that's a question. Uh, it's analyzed similarly in different setup to cash graph given. No, actually I didn't think I I'd be able to cover that much uh, in this workshop. So I didn't uh, prepare for that, unfortunately. Uh, so if I just uh, actually supports uh, GraphQL analytics, uh, just, uh, just the same way it supports uh, REST API analytics. Any other questions? We have like five more minutes in the session. So there's a question, uh, is micro gateway supports GraphQL? No, not yet. Uh, we are planning to add that support uh, in, the, in the next release.
All right. Uh, looks like the, there are no more questions. So I think we can uh, wrap the session now. So I request uh, you to join our booths. We have, uh, you can uh, join WC2 both in the Expo tab. Uh, there are other colleagues uh, waiting to talk to you. So you can ask any uh, questions related to WS2 or related API manager or anything. So just go there uh, and have a visit uh, and talk with them. And then uh, we'll be having uh, a round table session just after this. So I invite you to join that as well. All right. Uh, so, so, so thank you very much, everyone, for joining the session. So, have a great two, have a great two days uh, in this uh, API days uh, interface. Right, thank you.